Clack, clack, what's happening, y'all? This your boy, Mitchy Slick. You watching Care Mac videos, man. The realest shit on the net. Yeah, that. Who is Mitchy Slick? Man. Mitchy Slick. <laughs> Father. Real hustler, though. Not just, not just cause you know, nigga. That's cool to say, and just a nigga that try to be fair and good, homie, and a not not really understood, nigga, and underappreciated, nigga, man. But at the same time, you know, traveler, you know, shit. Well, I want to welcome you to the platform, man, and I appreciate you coming and being a part of this movement. Much love. Um, you got a lot of people that, a lot of fans that follow me that been asking me to interview you for a long time, man, and then. A lot of people be wanting me to get brothers up out of San Diego, so kill two birds with one stone right here. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a birthday coming up soon, huh? Mm -hmm. 29th, December. Mm -hmm. yeah. Capricorn, huh? So you was born in what? Early 70s? Yep. Doing, so you was brought up in the crack era? I was the worst age in the crack era. I was the age when I didn't know right from wrong learning in you know in the crack years so you figure at the height of the shit you figure like shit 88 87 86 from 86 to like 89 you know them was the years when i was 11 and 13 and 20 you know right in there when you learning everything you know what uh city and state was you san raised? diego california is that southeast southeast san diego the heart of southeast yeah that what local gang is in that area? Um, I'm, 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 I grew up in the Lincoln Park area. That's between um, from uh, 58th to basically like 45, 45th Street, and then uh, and then from like uh, maybe like uh, Magnus Way, which is you know almost to uh, you know furthest to the to the south to um, Imperial. Coming from L.A., I always wanted the connection between, since y'all was so close to the border, mm -hmm. like San Diego probably had a lot of drugs, probably cheaper prices. Walk me through you being a kid and you seeing all these dudes making money, like what type of cars, what people dressed like, what was the mood, what was the people looking like? During them early, the, the, them early years you talking about? Like, yeah, when you was a kid, like 83, 84, 85. That little homie. So you figure like, you know, the, the part that stand out is going to be the crack era because it was niggas that was just like, you know, when I explained it, I, I got my own perspective because being the age, I, when it was cracking the most, I was too young to be outside selling dope. I mean, it was niggas that was 12 years old selling dope and shit, but... I wasn't doing that shit then, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, like, before that, homie, I, who knows what was going on? Because the impact that was from the crack area was so strong to where it just smothered anything that was going on before that. So, you know, the same shit that was going on in L.A. was going on in the day ago. You, man, mm -hmm. I remember it was a homie. Listen, it was one of the homies. I ain't going to say his name. I might say his name. He might like this story. I don't know. But uh, I remember, homie, before crack, to a telling a young nigga this shit, he ain't going to understand. Like, imagine, nigga, an era, because I ain't that motherfucking old, nigga. Like, imagine no cell phones, no beepers. Imagine having to be at home when you meet a broad. You got to walk up and talk to her. You ain't finna mm -hmm. meet her online. Imagine having to walk up to a little girl, holler at her, get her phone number, you get hers, or memorize, or whatever was going, if you didn't have no pen, and then having to be home at a certain time when you tell her you're going to be there to receive her call. Nigga, you know how hard it was to get some pussy, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, but during that time, it was niggas that was like, I remember it would be a nigga, his whole family, for ever since we knew him, they ain't nothing but being but broke and snotty nose. And then when crack came out, that nigga fuck around and get a sack. And then 30 days later, this nigga buying a new car off the lot. A nigga that ain't never been nothing but a dusty, snotty-nosed nigga. And, and 
I'm talking about it was shit like that going on. It was one of my homies at my school. Shout out to the big homie PT, you know. I was named after PT when I first was coming up and shit. Feelers and shit was a mark of, of you was having money. If a nigga had a beeper on, that meant you sold dope. That was, you didn't have it for no other reason. If a nigga had a pair of $85, $90 feelers on, nigga, you sold dope. Nigga, because in 86, 87, nigga, wasn't no, nobody mama buying no Jordans and no $100 shoes and no shit like that. Niggas' shoes was $50. You feel me? $45. I was a little kid, but you know. And then after that came out, shit, dope came out, niggas started wearing feelers. That was double whatever. That would be like a nigga in high school with some $1,500 sneakers on. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And so... This nigga came to school. I was, me, my mama had me so spoiled, homie, to where, like, niggas thought I sold dope when I was in the sixth grade. Because I had feelers on. My feet was small as a motherfucker. I had moms give me some, so I had to wear the women's feelers. <laughs> but I was fucking niggas up, though. Mm -hmm. It was one nigga in the 12th grade that had feelers. That was my big, my big really CJ. And I was the only other nigga. I'm in the sixth grade. School go to 12th grade. I got feelers on, nigga. I was killing the whole school. Nigga, the homie PT came to school at, like about a week later with, with some feelers on. It was like, okay, PT fucking niggas up. That nigga came to school with the next day, nigga, with another color on. Man, that nigga came to school every day for the whole week with a different color feelers on. That nigga was so popping. That meant so much, nigga, the teacher started sweating this nigga, searching his cars at school and shit like that. Knew something was going. Man, they kicked this nigga out of school for balling so hard. Mm. Kicked him out of school. This is niggas wasn't used to it. This nigga was starting such a commotion at school. They kicked this nigga out of school after he had got a sack. You know what I'm saying? It started coming up. Kicked that nigga out of school. That nigga came pick me up 30 days later, nigga, in a brand new blazer, nigga. Dayton's and everything off the lot 30 days later. You feel me? That's the type of shit that was going on when I was a kid. Seeing niggas do this shit. And I don't care what niggas seeing today. There's nothing like that going on now. You know what I mean? There's nothing to where, like, niggas is 16. Man, I had a nigga, one of my young homies. He was young, then he was a lot older than me. The homie, um, the homie, um, who was that? That was, uh, um, the homie Black, uh, Black Daryl. This nigga fuck around and had his own limo or something like that, I remember, homie, when I was, in, when he was like 16, nigga come through the school, from middle school, 16 year old, nigga throwing money out the roof, nigga in the limo, in the limo by itself, you feel me? Niggas ain't doing no shit like that today, you know what I'm saying? Not no 16 year old niggas, you know? So that's the type of shit that was influencing me when I was coming up. So it was it was fucked up. I, I could have been could have been a doctor, a lawyer. You know the story. How far did you have to go to to get to school? I used to walk. I used to walk to the bus stop, and then the bus stop took me up on Skyline Drive, about about five minute about five minute bus ride. But it was like about five minute walk, five minute bus ride. Was yeah. you walking past rock spots or seeing base heads hanging out? Check this out, homie. The homies had a car wash on the corner of of Logan and Euclid. And then, you know, it was a, it was a, a hustling click in my turf. Uh, notorious as fuck niggas know about the Sendo mob. I mean, the homies had a car wash on the corner. And the motherfucker says, Sendo car wash, $5 on the sign. And when I get off the bus, homie, like six, seven grade, homie, these niggas had every kind of car that niggas wanted lined up out there with candies on the homie. And I would just remember the big homies over there. I'm like, these niggas don't give a fuck about no $5. These niggas, on, and the only cars getting washed is they shit. You know what I'm saying? These niggas got Elko's, Suzuki Samurai's, motherfucking um, uh, 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 Blazers. You know what I'm saying? Elk, everything with candies, real Louis Vuitton tarps, not the, not the aftermarket shit. No, these niggas was going buying duffel bags and shit and cutting them up to do the interior with and shit in their cars and shit. And I would see the homies out there when I get out of school with their feet kicked up. You know what I'm saying? You just give a nigga five, ten dollars of shit just for, you know, doing whatever the fuck. And it fucked me up, homie, early. The homies was out there, like, straight up, like, for sure. Some of the homies out there was millionaires, I mean, you know what I mean? hundred thousand there is easy, you know what I'm saying? Young niggas. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, in the 80s, did you guys have a lot of ballers or was it just a select few that was getting money? Well, shit, you know, the story go, homie, like, most of our shit was, you know, L.A. niggas was in San Diego at the time. L.A. niggas was trying to sell everything that was going on up there. Was some, some of the ballinest niggas in L.A. was in Daco. You know what I mean?
I mean, you know, they you know they was trying to do, do their thing and set up shop in, in, in parts of town and shit like that. And it kind of shifted the, the the way San Diego was rocking. I didn't know much of what was going on in the streets before that, you know what I'm saying, at 10, 11. But I knew what was going on after that. And it was a lot of shit, you know. A lot of, a lot of hustlers, homie. A lot of niggas make, make it, a lot of shit. It was everywhere, homie. It was Even the young niggas, homie. Even the young, I remember the homies, um... The big homies had the cars, and all the young homies that was like fourteen and fifteen had elites. Remember the elites? Yeah. Niggas had can niggas candy elites with systems and shit on them. All the young homies that was hustling had elites and shit. You know what I mean? For those that don't, you young niggas, it's a scooter, nigga, like a scooter, nigga. But it was dope though. You know what I'm saying? Look that shit up. Google that shit, nigga. <laughs> the niggas had them candied up with Louis Vuitton seats and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, shit. Hell yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering because we don't hear much about kingpins in San Diego, but we know San Diego was was getting it. Man, it was big names at the time. I'm not gonna say what they was doing, mm -hmm. but salute to certain big homies like you know my, my big homie Yard and EB and shit. You know, what I'm saying Big Blood Hound and you know shit. Even um, it was a lot of brands that was balling. You know, what I'm saying um, Big Scarface and and and. You know, Brims is like brotherhood to us. You know what I'm saying? They right next door to us. Um, um, who was that? China Dog and and just names you would hear. You know what I'm saying? Because in and as a young nigga, these niggas was like these niggas on the wall. You know, they was like, you know, MVPs in the streets. Mm -hmm. And you know, you didn't know too much being a ten year old, nine year old nigga, eleven year old nigga, but you would associate them with their cars. So certain legendary niggas had legendary cars that we even talk about to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like Yard had this this um, Nissan truck that was killing shit, and Delano had them Blazers and them Suzukis, and Eddie Boy had that goddamn to catch me a Leprechaun lap. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying? It was cars, and that was it, you didn't know, you didn't really know how, you know. So you're talking between like '86 and '88. Exactly. Them the cars that was popping back like then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, at what point did you come from? Familiar with the Bloods? Shit, homie. I remember being like, see, when I was young, homie, my parents lived in um, the Valencia Views area, which is about, you know, you could be in my neighborhood and then just walk two, three blocks and be in O'Farrell Park neighborhood. Is 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 O'Farrell Park now? O'Farrell Park was a little smaller back then, more towards Martin Luther King Park, but as the years came on, they kind of Kept back a little bit west, a little bit towards where we was at, and um, shit, man, I remember being like six years old, writing blood on the wall and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and um, it was more of a all of a blood thing, not separated different hood, but just little niggas, blood, 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 and we'd be writing on the wall and shit. Six, seven years old, too young to really know what's happening. But then once I moved to um to the Lincoln Park area, when my parents split up. Which wasn't nothing but maybe like a good ten blocks away from there, but it's another neighborhood. I had to go to Knox Elementary, and there was a little bit more shit going on over there. Not like it wasn't niggas over. You know, it was homies from Lincoln Park that went to Valencia Park, but it was more trenchy over there. You know what I'm saying? And when I started going to Knox Elementary, and shit, nigga, we was full fledged flagging and shit in the shit fourth and fifth grades. You know, hmm. 